Hi, and welcome to the Highlands from Home art workshop with myself, Julie, today. Our source of inspiration is coming from the beautiful late 19th century stained glass windows, which you will see upon your approach to the entrance of the Highlands Gallery. The Highlands is located in the former Franciscan Friary Church, which was built in 1829. I will pay particular attention during our practical workshop to the first north-facing window, which depicts St. Bonaventurer, who was healed by St. Francis of Assisi while ill, and then later joined the Franciscan Order. He was later made a cardinal by Pope Gregory X. The window shows him wearing his red cardinal's hat. The history of coloured glass dates back to ancient Egyptian times, to the 3rd century AD. And here you'll see a fine example of a coloured glass jar. Then in the 4th century in Rome, we see um, the Ligurgis cup, which is um, red in colour and very decorative and very ornate. At the British Museum, you can find this. It's the oldest example of a stained glass window in the world, coming from St. Paul's Monastery in Jarrow from the Anglo-Saxon period. Here we have the most famous stained glass window in the world, the Rose Window from Notre Dame, dating back to the 13th century. Absolutely spectacular. And this is St. Chapel uh, in Paris. And it is a beautiful small little chapel, nearly all decorated in stained glass window. Here is Augsburg Cathedral in Bavaria, Germany. It's the oldest example of stained glass windows in situ, which means they're still there in the cathedral. Here is Canterbury Cathedral, boasting over 1,200 square metres of stained glass window. And again, dating back uh, very far to the 13th century. This is a Tiffany lamp from 1915, a peony Tiffany lamp. And this fetched $93,000 at auction only a few years ago. Here you see, um, this is Henry Matisse, a French artist. And in his later life, he did a lot of these um, symbolic cut out organic shapes for his stained glass windows. And they're so colorful and so modern and um, so full of life. They're just absolutely beautiful. Here's another French artist. This is Marc Chagall, and he believed in spiritualism and symbolism. And he used to love this beautiful blue color, which you can see in a stained glass. That's from 1977. Here's David Hockney a few years back in 2018, proud as punch, being commissioned by the Queen for Westminster Abbey to decorate one of the windows. And there's a detail over there, really colorful and really different from anything else that you would see in Westminster Abbey. If you've ever been, it's in London. And this is the La Sagrada Familia stained glass windows from Barcelona by architect Antonio Gaudi. And these are just wow. Look at those colours. Stunning. Yes. This is Judy Chicago, a contemporary artist and Donald Woodman, logo from the Holocaust Project. And this dates back to 1992. And this is uh, stained glass. And here we have uh, something from 2014 on Brooklyn Bridge. A beautiful um, kind of greenhouse. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, that's by Tom Fruin. And then this takes us to my last image, which is Bewley's Cafe on Grafton Street in Dublin by Harry Clark. Hi, everyone. You're very welcome to the Highlands at Home with myself, Julie, today. I'd like to take this opportunity to sincerely thank all the girls and boys and the adults, too, for their truly marvellous pieces of art that were sent in in response to our previous workshops. We were just blown away by the absolute creativity and uh, the workmanship that went into all of those pieces. So keep up the good work. And perhaps after today's uh, lesson, you can send in your responses to this workshop too. So the technique we're looking at today is called um, foil embossed stained glass windows, inspired by the stained glass windows at the High Lanes Gallery. Now, during our art lesson, we looked at artists such as David Hockney and Chagall and uh, Henry Matisse. And we looked at um, the rose window at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. And we also looked at La Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. And you can use any of these as your inspiration for your piece today, your masterpiece. Um, so you will want to lay out your design um, first and then we will begin to work on our pieces. But the materials that you may want to assemble now before we start are... As follows you will need some wool you will need to get yourself a variety of colored permanent markers 
Now they do need to be permanent because um, they will they will smudge off the tin foil if not, and we don't want to ruin your beautiful works of art. You'll need a pencil to draw onto your cardboard, your design for your stained glass window. And your cardboard can come from anything in the house that you're going to throw out into your recycling bin. This particular uh, piece of cardboard I sourced from the inside of a duvet set. Now, don't fret. If you um, only have cardboard that has a design or a labeling on it or a logo or whatever, like a cereal box, what you just need to simply do is to apply plain sheets of paper, white paper, just glue them down over it, over the surface and leave them to dry for 10 or 15 minutes before you start and then you will have a plain sheet to work with. So uh, yeah, we're going to begin now. So assemble all your materials and we'll start uh, the practical workshop. Enjoy. Okay, when you're happy and you've all your um, materials in place and you have your cardboard ready, you can choose which design you're going to lay down. So you can go for the pointed arch, which you'll see mostly in churches, or you could go for a big round rose window like what we saw at Notre Dame, or you can just go for the plain square one if you like. So you have three options. I'm going to go for the pointed arched window today, which means you just loosely place your design along the sides like so. So that when you cut it out, it's going to have an arched peak at the top. Now you can use something like a cereal bowl to make your circle within that, like so. And bring it down again, perhaps, to make the second one. And then you're going to work out your design from here. So you could have some zigzags or you could have some triangles or squares. And inside the circles, you can make them as um, elaborate or ornate as you like, or you can make them very simple. You could do perhaps a, a flower design um, or something like that. I've now cut out the edges along my design. Um, so I'm left with what looks like an arch. And I have my two circular shapes within this arch. And now I'm just going to draw out some layout lines like so, just to mark out where I'm going to put my wool. So remember not to get too hung up about the um, design underneath because it's really just a guideline. Our wool will be um, placed over these lines and we'll be using the design then more so than the underneath pattern. So don't worry too much about it. So I'm just bringing these over diagonally like so. Um, the line there. And again, don't get too worked up about having all the materials like rulers and whatever. Just go with the flow. Okay, I'm just going to we're going to be placing the wool over um, these outlines as we go along. So I've set down my design completely now, and um, I've used the one from the High Lanes. Um, I'm a little bit ambitious putting a figure in, which you can do if you like, but if you'd rather just stay with the simple forms and shapes, then just do something like a flower. And we'll see how this works out. So basically you're going to get your print stick and you're running it along your design lines and then you're getting your wool, you're cutting it to size and you're literally just sticking it down. And then you can cut at the edges the, any of the excess wool that you have. So don't worry about that too much just getting it down and letting it dry and stay there. Now, as you progress, you're just filling in, you're cutting the wool to size and you're just placing it along the glue and following your pattern. Okay, when your design is finished and completely ready, so you've let it dry, all the glue is dry and your wool is in place and you're very happy with your finished design, then it's time to move on to the fun part, the tin foil. Now, this is just a little note for parents. This particular part, the design part, is quite tedious. And I imagine the children are going to need help with the cutting of the, the wool. Um, but don't rush through it. Even if you have to do this uh, one day and then perhaps the next day you can do the second part of the workshop um, because it can take quite a lot of time. Now, just secure.
secure your tin foil on, um, I suggest that you put the shiny side down and you have the non-shiny side facing up towards you. And just secure it if you can at the back with sellotape. So you get this nice, taut, uh, tight finished um, surface on the top. And then you'll begin to run your finger over your underlying design and you should see the embossing of your design coming through. Now again, patience is a virtue, mums and dads and adults. And it will take, this process does take a little bit of time, but don't rush it because if you do, then you're going to rip the tin foil. So just enjoy this part, take your time and let your design come true. Now, if you want to use, carefully use the side of your nail, you'll make the indentation stronger. That's just my little tip there. Just really carefully go over and the final stages with your nail. And then when you're happy, when your design is more or less ready to go, you can begin to colour in your stained glass. Now, this is the man from the High Lanes Gallery with the red hat. So the next time you're down, have a look out for him. And you just continue like this until you're finished colouring in all your window. So as you can see, when you're using your markers, it takes beautifully to the tin foil. It almost gives off this kind of shimmery, watery effect. So just continue with your colouring all the way around your design until you are finished. Ta-da! So this is the finished product. This is the stained glass window inspired by the stained glass windows at the High Lanes Gallery. And uh, as you can see, I think the man turned out quite well. I was a little optimistic, um, but I do think he was okay in the end. And the kind of two or three main things to remember during this is that it can be a lengthy process. So take your time. It doesn't all have to be done in one sitting. You can do a little bit with the kids um, for an hour or two, and then you can come back and finish it the next day. And the next thing to remember is to be careful because it is quite delicate, the tin foil, and it can rip easily. So really, when you're colouring and you're sticking things down, just try to be as careful and patient as you can. And the third thing is enjoy. And thank you for joining us here at Highlands at Home today. We'll see you again next time.